Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of WoW Weekly with Mist. And for this week events, we have Call to Arms. It will be Deep Wind Gorge for this week. Pet Battles is going to be the weekly. And we still have the 100% experience buff and rep buff. Okay, so another thing going on this week, and this is probably the bigger thing going on this week, is Brewfest. So Brewfest is back, and it will be running from September 20th to October 6th, so you got a couple of weeks with it. Nothing new has been added for 2020, but all the old stuff is still there. So I will show you what is there and we can also go to the vendor. I think I tend to slack on Brewfest since I got all the achievements. So I think I actually still need some stuff too. But, um, but we'll go there and check it out. Okay, so for starters, we have the quest that will be in here. So Brewmaster is the title that you can get for doing all the Brewfest stuff. They're all fairly easy, and as you can see, not many achievements at all. So, eat eight of the foods, very easy to do. Kill Corrin, he's in the queue, I'll show you in a sec. But you'll, you'll wanna do that anyway if you're going after the mount. Obtain a Wolpertinger pet, easy. Join the Brew of the Month Club. Yep, that's pretty easy as well. And Have Keg Will Travel is when you get the Brewfest mount. So these are all super easy achievements. So that might be something you want to do if, that, um, if you're into those. And it also does count towards your What a Long Strange Trip It's Been which rewards the Violet Proto-Drake, so yeah, that's cool. Okay, so these are the mounts you can get. There's the Great Brewfest Kodo, and then the Swift Brewfest Aram. Okay, so let's go through the toys. Yeah, I don't have all of them. Like I said, I've got a few things that I always forget to do here. So I'm gonna work on getting the shit that I need uh, this year. Okay, so the Brewfest Pony Keg is probably the most popular one since that one I've had, which means I got it like way back, probably around the time I did the achievement, so 2010. There's the Keg Pony that's 200 currency. The banner is a hundred. Sausage grill, two hundred. Hearthstone. I don't see a. I don't see a price on that one. We'll we'll look when we get to the vendor there. Okay, so for pets that you can get, there's three pets. First one is the Wolpern Tinger's Tankard. That will get you the Wolper Tinger pet. This one doesn't cost you anything because it is a quest. So, uh, so yeah, if you want more than one, just do the quest on more than one character. The next pet is called the Pint Sized Pink, and I'm probably gonna butcher this next part, but Pachyderm, Pachyderm. It's basically an elephant. It's basically like a pink alec, you know. But that's the official name. But yeah, it's a pink alec. And uh, this one will cost you a little currency. And then the final one is the Stout Elemental, which I believe is the most recent pet added because I've had the other two for quite a while. And I think I've only had the Stout one for maybe a few years. So I think it's definitely the more recent one. Um, probably, probably when the Panda expansion came out, they added that one. So, um, so yeah, those are the three pets that you can obtain. 
Okay, so Brewfest is Ironforge for Alliance and Ogremar for Horde. Best way to get to Ironforge is just by going through the Boralus portal, and then there'll be Ironforge there. Okay, so as you can see, it is pretty fucking busy in here. What can I get for you today? Okay, so one of my toys is here. Walk with you. New doorways have opened to us. Okay, so there's there's a quest. Um, choose reward, whatever. They really need to up these rewards. This guy still only gives one stamina, two, five, like, what the hell? Okay, this place is busy, so there must be someone important here. Let's see. Oh yeah, this is the guy with everything. Can I help yeah. you? Oh, the chick. <laughs> the chick with everything. Okay. I'm surprised I don't have that. I I have so many different colors of these steins. Okay, definitely some transmog stuff. Damn, I don't even have the tavern. Yeah, I have been slacking over here. Okay, I have the pets, so that's good. There's the brew pack. What do these look like? There we go. Eh, they're nothing too special, but still I'll grab them. So that is the list of stuff. As you can see, there is a lot of stuff in there. Okay, so as you can see, there's lots of quests on the board, guys. So, there's this one, which rewards 40, so that's not too bad. Safe travels. I'm not going to take them, but I will later. Okay, so that's how you get the Wolpertinger pet. So that would knock out an achievement right there, that Wolpertinger one. So, yeah, it's a, it's a quest, so that's nice and easy. That must be how I have so many. But I don't need more than I have, so I won't Watch do that back. one. Oh, it's the... <laughs> Down, down platter. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so participate in this for 25 tokens. Okay. Honored, I'm sure. And then that's 10. We got one more down here. Interest down the pipes. And that's just for gold. <laughs> Okay, 
So, in my stream this past weekend, I was asked if Brewfest would be giving a um, experience buff. The answer is yes. Um, basically, what it is is there's a buff called the Brewfest Enthusiast. So, this this is where uh, random NPCs give speeches over at their camps. It happens at 6.15 a.m. and p.m. Pacific. It'll, it'll buff everyone that's nearby the camp for two hours. And the buff will be kind of like the Dark Moon buff. It'll be a 10% bonus experience. So if you are hoping to get that, then you just got to be there around those times. So like I said, 6.15 a.m. and 6.15 p.m. Okay, so as far as how many tokens can you earn per day for the event, uh, the first day you can earn between 135 and 165 for tokens. And then every day after that, you'll earn between 35 and 65. So your first day is definitely the best day. And if we go by, by the lowest number there... Okay, so Brewfest technically is 16 days, but the 16th day Brewfest ends in the morning, so we're just going to count 15 days of Brewfest. So at the lowest amount... So if you did your at least 35 tokens per day, and you did your first day of Brewfest, the total amount of tokens at minimum that you would have by the end of the event would be 625 which is actually a lot of currency for a lot of things a lot of things in the list are 200 some are 100 so that could warrant you you know a few items so yeah for sure go go do that like i said 625 minimum is what you'll get through the event um, I'll do the calculations for the max, just in case you are curious. So, 625 for the minimum. And if you manage to do absolutely everything where you were maxing out every single day for the event, then you would end up with 1,075 tokens. So that's pretty good, too. So, so anywhere between, we'll say, the 600 to 1,000 mark is where you would be ending off for your character for this event. So definitely if you're like me and you have quite a few things that you still need to get off the vendor, tally it up to make sure that if you need to bring an alt in that you do in time. If you haven't done it already, today's a great day to do that because it's still at the beginning of the event. Also, um the queue here, which I'll actually do. So that is uh, Corin Dire Brew right there. And this is a way to get tokens as well. So even if you have the mount and all that, if you're still going after items in the Brewfest, you're still going to want to do this because it's a way to get extra tokens. Which is why there's a minimum to a maximum token amount that you can get. It's dependent on how many tokens you get from the um, cake-shaped treasure chest. So you can do this once a day. And it's really fast. It'll bring you into black rock and yeah, it's super fast.
So yeah, I totally forgot that you actually get a quest from it as well, so that issues you some currency as well. Nice. So as you can see, this is where you get the um, Brewfest Ram and all that. If I remember right, and this is the same with Headless Horseman, so this probably is the case, but if I remember right, when I got it, it was a drop and I rolled against the group with it, which is exactly how Headless Horseman was. I remember having to roll against a group for it. So it's nice that they come out bags now. Probably a lot easier to get now, since they're in bags. Okay, so I ended up getting 13 there. So not bad. I have I literally only did the Q and I have 53 tokens. So, so yeah. Granted, you won't get that quest every day. That quest is like the first... The first of the event quest. So, um... So yeah. But, you will keep getting, you know, a around the 13 mark for doing it every day, so... Okay, so I think that concludes our section for the brew fest. I think I've gone over enough of that. So yeah, definitely if you're needing some stuff or you need some achievements, this is the place to be. Okay guys, so for goals, it's gonna be brew fest. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do pretty much everything I possibly can on the druid. As far as the alts, I think I'm just gonna bring them into the queues. I think that's all I'm gonna do with the alts, and they will just purchase the cheaper items. And, uh, yeah. Um, granted, that's what I'm thinking right now, but I am gonna, like, do the math after I do this video and find out what exactly I need to, to come up with token wise to get everything including the cosmetics so who knows maybe two or three might end up having to do stuff out here which is not a big deal because I'm just gonna bring them all out here and park them so it's it's not a huge deal they can just be parked out here but um but yeah so anyway that is the goals and um and I guess we can move over to news now. Okay, guys. So we are at the news section now. So there isn't a whole lot of news for this week. We're still waiting on pre-patch. Uh, I've said it before, but I I still predict that we will be waiting till Brewfest ends. And then we'll probably get some news on that. Yeah, so that's kind of why I felt I could go over Brewfest a bit there for you guys without extending the video longer. Um, yeah, with the lack of news, the video is still going to be exactly the same length as it always is with uh, with a Brewfest explanation in it. So the first piece of news has to do with the mobile app that we have for the WoW Companion. So they have been changing up things and Slow they've down. added a feature that I think is really good for the mobile app. And Enough. that is that you can now choose between expansions. So that is something they are uh, doing for the Shadowlands stuff. And yeah, so you'll be able to choose between your Legion, BFA, and Shadowlands um, board missions and stuff like that. Uh, for those that have been playing some of the Shadowlands stuff, um, for beta and all that, uh, there has been some stuff with the Great Vault where there was duplicate items appearing. Uh, Blizzard confirmed that that is completely unintended and not supposed to happen. So, uh, so no, you can't get the same item in one week. I do personally really like the vault system because it does give people an opportunity 
to be able to get loot that way right now as it stands and as it always has with the mythics is you only got it if you were doing mythics there there's the pvp cash but like come on let's get serious that gear is shit and always has been like you you never get anything good gear wise out of the pvp caches you know so it's it's kind of nice that there's some alternatives to how you could get some bonus loot on reset cuz you know honestly I I don't even necessarily care about the loot anymore because it's end of expansion and, you know, I'm 475, you know, at the time of recording this video anyway. So I'm not too terribly concerned. But the thing is, I still like doing it because it's a, it's a great feeling to know that you have something to look forward to on, on reset day, right? I think... I don't know if I'm the only one that thinks along that line. Maybe other people just do it because they need gear, right? But, you know, for me, I like looking forward to something. Reset day should be a good, a, a good memorable day, something you look forward to. And while, well, yeah, there is the reset of raids to look forward to and all that, but I've always really liked their system with the caches because it's that extra thing that makes you excited for reset day. So, um, so it's really cool that they're adding more ways that people can do it, you know, because what if you don't do mythics, right? Or what if you're a writer and you don't do mythics or, you know, you don't do any PVE at all and you're just doing PVP stuff, you know, you still can have that feeling of something exciting waiting for you on reset day so so I, I really like that okay so the next piece of news is some updates regarding the covenant system so basically uh when you join a covenant that part's really easy um you know other than well for me the decision because i don't know how you guys handle decisions but i am like the worst decision maker ever. I will sit there for an hour contemplating the pros and the cons of it. And like, it can be up to two hours before I even decide which way I'm going to go. You know, <laughs> granted, don't worry. I know I'll be streaming it. So don't worry. I won't take two hours to sign with confident. Okay, so... While that part's easy, if you choose to leave a covenant, uh, that part is not so easy. So they have, they have um, confirmed the steps that it will take. Granted, it is still in beta, so they might t tweak a couple of things here and there, but I think these basic steps are gonna stay in. Okay, so your first step is you're gonna talk to the ambassador of the covenant that you want to rejoin. They will be upset with you because you, you betrayed their trust and they're going to tell you to prove your worth. In order to prove your worth, you are going to need to do tasks in those zones. And you'll, you'll have a bar once it reaches 100%, you'll be good to go. As far as tasks that you can complete, you can kill rares, rare elites, collect treasures, uh, do world quests, and dungeon bosses. Uh, rumor is that if you're looking for the fastest way, they say spamming dungeons is the fastest way to get your bar to the 100%. Which I guess I can see because everything else is kind of capped, right? Like you know, the rares will be, you know, capped to how many times you can kill one, right? Treasures will eventually vanish. World quests will eventually vanish. So yeah, I can totally understand the dungeon bosses because you can reset the dungeon. They also say that each dungeon boss will get you like 12% on your bar for your 100%. 
Uh, they recommend two dungeons with four bosses per. And to complete a single world quest. Also, uh, it is said that if you are Necrolord, you can do Theodore of Pain and skip the world quest. So once this is done, you get head back to Oribos and turn in the quest. And the ambassador there is going to tell you they need some time to figure out if they want to let you rejoin. And, uh... And obviously they're gonna, like, <laughs> Un unless Blizzard really wants to troll us here, make us go through a lot of work and then say, fuck you, you, you untrustworthy untr bastard, you're not joining nothing. <laughs> what a troll that would be. So anyway, once you're done that, uh, at that point, you need to wait for the next weekly reset. So honestly... If you're doing this at the beginning of a week, it might seem like a long process, but weekly reset, if you if you chose to do this, like say on a Monday, then you're really just waiting 24 hours, right? So it really just depends on what day of that week did you decide to go and do all this stuff. So, um, so yeah. So it could, could either be, you know, a long wait, or you could just wait till the weekend or something and do it then. And then it doesn't seem so bad. So once the week has reset, the ambassador will have a new quest for you called Rebuild Our Trust. And this basically asks you to do exactly the same thing, prove your worth, and you will have to, um, again, do all that. But at that point, um, you'll be part of them. Okay, so when you are done this one, you can return to Oribos to turn in the quest. And on turn on, or on turn on, on turn in, uh, your covenant will immediately swap. So while that sounds like a great thing and basically what you're intending to do, the only thing I would suggest off that is make sure that you've gotten whatever you want to get with that other covenant. Because if you miss anything, then you would need to go back. Now, this doesn't seem too bad to me. The, the, you know, changing covenants. I like, I am used to Blizzard's time gating of shit. And this seems like, this seems really easy. I'm, I'm even surprised you can actually change covenants, to be honest. I thought they were going to lock us into that shit. So, so this is like a blessing in my eyes. Uh, me personally, I was pondering doing four characters in like each of the covenants. And I probably will still do that because I have the characters and they're gonna level in Shadowlands anyway, so why not? But I just thought I'd mention that if you're a person that doesn't have alts or many alts, this isn't the worst situation. It probably wouldn't even take you that long throughout the two year period of Shadowlands, of course. It probably wouldn't take you that long to get what you want over there. Swap your covenant, get your next one, swap. Like, you're only looking at a week per swap. So, uh, so yeah. And the, the bar, it's not like you're gaining rep to rejoin something, you know? Like, it's, it seems like a super easy process to me. And that concludes the news for this week. So I hope you enjoyed. So have fun in Brewfest this week, guys. Uh, don't forget that there is that, that experience buff as well, the 10%. So you just got to be around the events. So for Alliance, be over outside of Ironforge and for Horde Ogrimmar. And um, that'll be 6.15 a.m. and 6.15 p.m. Pacific, and you will get a two-hour buff. And we will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.